In this episode of Art Loft, we present Pride History in Key West. It's not just a pride about pride, gay pride, but it's about pride in Key West. Cindy Wynn, an artist of fine paintings and sculptures that double as home furniture. A gallery visit with Peter Vey, an artist of paradise. I think if you really like something, it, you naturally you gravitate towards that, and that's what you want to paint. Billy the Squid and the Sea Cow Drifters. And the Key West Butterfly in Nature Conservatory. It's all ahead in this episode of Art Loft. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. Hi, I'm Jumani Anambi, and from the amazing Key West, this, this right here, is Art Loft. We're coming to you from Key West. Now, every June, Key West celebrates Pride Week. We'll be taking you on a journey to discover Pride history, local artists, musicians, galleries, and of course, lots and lots of fun. Now, 2018 marks the 40th anniversary of Key West as the premier LGBT destination. Let's check out some Pride Week festivities, the parade on Duval Street, and chat with Peter Arnault, a Pride historian. Come on, it's gonna be a great time in Key West. I'm Pete Arno. We're standing in the offices of the Key West Business Guild, which is the oldest gay and lesbian chamber of commerce. The guild was formed 40 years ago in 1978 by a group of businessmen that applied to the Chamber of Commerce to form a separate division for gay guest houses and was turned down. Since then, the guild has grown and prospered and we are as large as the Chamber of Commerce now. And we produce a number of events each year, uh, Pride being one of them. At the end of the 80s, a city commissioner, Jeremy Anthony, became very concerned about what was happening with AIDS. At that point, we had uh, people lying down in front of buses in New York to get more money for it and so forth. And they formed the Pride Alliance here in Key West, which started Key West Pride. And at first, it was just a group of people walking down Duval Street without any permit or anything. And this grew, and eventually the Pride Alliance was formed by the Gay and Lesbian Community Center which took it to the next step. And then when the community center uh, decided that, that they, were, they really didn't have a, a reason to be in business anymore because the community is so accepting, it, the event was given to the Key West Business Guild about nine years ago. And under the stewardship of the guild, it has grown tremendously. We've been very happy to have Stoli associated with us for the last four years with the Stoli Cocktail Classic. And we kicked off our event last night at Island House, which is one of the leading men's gay guest houses in the world. And last night was the only night each year that women are allowed. So we had quite a time and a lot of rain, and we drank a lot of vodka, <laughs> so it was fun. But our whole Pride Week is just full of uh, events for people to do, from readings at the theater, to a, we have a wonderful street fair each year, and there are events for everybody to come down here, so it's just not a big party all the time, although that is certainly one of the missions of it. It's, it's a real fun week, and like many of the uh, Pride celebrations all over the country, they were morphing into Pride in the community. 
So uh, it's not just a pride about pride, gay pride, or gay and lesbian pride, it's about pride in Key West. And um, I think that's really a great thing because it involves a lot more people. Key West is becoming even more important again as a sanctuary city. And we're very proud to be here and, and welcome everybody. As we've seen, the arts are always thriving in the Florida Keys. Today, we'll meet local artist Cindy Wynn, who uses old age techniques of welding, torching, and grinding to create sculptures and furniture all in one. Inside her welding studio is where all the magic takes place. Let's see what she's working on right now. Matter of fact, this is her chair and it's very comfortable. Check it out. I'm Cindy Wynn. I've been making furniture uh, for the last 30 years. I build furniture out of scrap metal. I have probably about 200 to 250,000 pounds of scrap metal. My welding studio, then I, I have an idea or the scrap metal gives me an idea and I go out and I start collecting parts and I keep at it until I have the whole design. Usually I design about 10, 10 to 12 pieces at once, so there's pieces of pieces and parts everywhere that have a future as furniture, either lamps, tables, or chairs is usually what I make. Furniture can be art. It's not, you know, the functionality, uh, people think, oh, well, it's, if it's functional, it's not art. But I, I really think it is because it changes people. You know, it, when people, just because you can touch it and sit on it doesn't mean it's not art. I first got started in college. I took all the basic classes, uh, drawing, painting, um, and then I, I glommed onto ceramics for about three years, which is six semesters. At the end of uh, the sixth semester, our ceramics teacher said, you guys get all your stuff out of here. And I thought, well, I'll just take a break and I'll take sculpture two, which was welding. I learned how to weld really easily and I was frustrated because I hadn't made anything creative. So I just made my partner a chair as a joke and it's like my brain lit on fire. An idea can come from the materials or it can come from my head and then I uh, squeeze the materials into my idea or vice versa. But um, I study all kinds of furniture, especially 18th century. 18th century furniture has uh, really a lot of amazing details. I use uh, some glass, some wood, but mostly it's all scrap metal. I go out into either, if I'm up north, I go out into a real scrap yard, or if I'm down south here, I go out into my own scrap yard and I look for parts. I do a lot of welding, a lot of cutting with a grinding disc, and um, a lot of cutting with a torch. And then uh, welding is the most fun step. And then the final step is to put a final coat of lacquer on it and take it down to the gallery. The grinding is still rough, but the cutting, I love cutting, I love welding, I love putting stuff together, I love the hot metal. Um, even when it burns me, I don't mind, you know. I feel happy. I'm working on a number of projects. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is the end of a, it's a series called Wrench Chair, and I've learned a new thing about spring steel. Um, you can't really weld it, so I'm, I catch it in a little cage, so that's the final step on this wrench chair. So. It'll still have movement with the spring, but it won't be in danger of breaking. My most recent commission, I did the headboard on commission. I have uh, four panels to carve. The headboard's all complete, except putting it together and carving the last three out of the four wood panels. And for speculative, I usually do uh, pedestals, console tables, uh, end tables, a lot of chairs. Chairs are my favorite, because chairs are really where I think the art is in my, my work because I make them so that people are very trepidatious when they see them. And then when they sit down, I can see for an instant 
everything kind of evaporates and they're back into a childlike state and they start laughing because it moves and it's comfortable and it's usually down here it's hot and it's, the chair is cool. I just like that um, moment when they, they it changes their perception of what furniture is about. You know, it's, it, it makes them feel differently about furniture and the way people interact with furniture changes when they see my stuff. Now, music is an essential element here in the Keys. Now, up next, we're presenting Billy the Squid and the Sea Cow Drifters. That's right, Billy the Squid and the Sea Cow Drifters. They're a local band here in Key West, and they are about to rock out. So sit back and chill and check it out. I'm Billy the Squid. Um, this is Jared Eisman. We are Billy the Squid and the Sea Cow Drifters. I'm the lead singer and harmonica player. I play guitar, electric guitar, lead guitar, and I'm a sea cow drifter. So we have myself, Sam is rhythm guitar, T-Bone or Tyler McCone is the drummer, and Patrick is the bass player. I just started recruiting people. I like to recruit musicians. So I heard him sing, and uh, I always loved rockabilly, and I just wanted to have a good rockabilly band. Uh, but it's really hard to find an authentic country vocals, and I thought he had a old style, authentic rockabilly voice. So I asked him if he wanted to sing a couple songs and try getting a little side project to uh, rockabilly band together. And then it turned into something that we all enjoyed so much that we just kept doing it. You know, we wanted to have that, something that gave that rock and roll, yet yeah, island and cowboy vibe, you know, so Billy the Kid became Billy the Squid, and then the Sea Cow Drifters. Because we're just a bunch of lazy manatees who are just drifting through life. <laughs> bunch of manatees drifting through life. When we first started out, it was super country. Very country. Very country. We had, you know, like slide and slow kind of swinging country stuff. I think Jared was just trying to ease me in. Yeah. <laughs> trying to make an, a rock and roller out of him. Makes it like wreckage on the road. Definitely a lot of infusion of really every influence that we've picked up in our musical careers along the way, we all kind of brought this all together into one band and consolidated it into one kind of strange sound. You gotta take that with bone all your heavy load. kind of like spaghetti western surf stuff. We look a little out of place, I think, sometimes, and sound a little out of place, because it's a lot of music. Like he's saying, he's singing like cowboy songs. He grew up on a ranch, and you know what I mean? But we're starting to, we're starting to kind of fit it in with not really an islandy sound, but just kind of a, a laid back sound, which QS is just laid back. Just kind of mixing the sounds together, but definitely it stands out. QS also had a, had a long history of folk and country musicians coming through here for a long, long time. I, I'm just happy we can kind of bring it back to, you know, more of that original sound. I am totally addicted to performing live for crowds. I, I just absolutely love it. There's no, there's no better feeling in the world than, you know, seeing some kids discover live music for their first time. That's really what keeps me in this. You know, we're just still experimenting so much with what we want to do and trying to try out new songs, you know, like when we play out live, we 
we uh, we just we try to play as hard and fast and loud a lot of the times, you know. But like on recent recordings, we're pulling back a little bit and trying to do some more mellow stuff. I feel good. I just feel like good. I just like being able to uh, rock out. I don't know really what's happening. It just feels good. I feel good <laughs> to play music. We're not trying to make any statements. We're not trying to like be poetic about nothing or we're just trying to just have fun. Like just sounds that like are just, you know, upbeat and fun. That's it, really. We live in a very fun place and we just want to perpetuate that. Yeah. Now, artist Peter Vey shows us the true definition of Key West and all of its paradise. Now, we're at Gallery on Green, where some of his paintings are on display. Let's check it out, come on. I'm Peter Vey, I'm an oil painter, and we're at the Gallery on Green. I always painted, and then, and then I think it was second grade, my teacher sent me home with this pastel I had done of some still life. And she said, you know, to my mom, she wrote a little note and said, this is really good, he's got some talent. And I've always had this interest. And I've always liked certain, uh, you know, had influences of different artists. And then, and then I was doing big abstract paintings, mostly acrylic, and a friend of mine who was an illustrator said, she said, Pete, I think you should try the uh, palette knife. And I did this one painting, and um, it was acrylic at that time, and it was like, that was it. That's all I wanted to do from that moment on. You know, I've just kind of perfected my style over, over years. There's pigment in all paint, and oil is the medium that, that binds it all together. And I use a palette knife. It's a little different from a brush. It's more it's just a knife, and you mix the paint and apply it to the canvas. It has a lot of texture. It's mostly realistic, although I do do some abstract things, but it has a loose, uh, natural kind of style to it. I mean, it's distinctive, I think, and the, the palette knife uh, helps make that uh, possible. You can't get too much detail with a, with a knife. It ends up being sort of loose and almost a, a abstract quality to it, but it is representational. You know, I live in Florida, so I think that's the big thing. It, you know, I, I'm inspired by what's around me. Key West in general is a great subject. It's charming. You've got water, you've got these beautiful clouds, you've got these beautiful palms, birds, everything. It all comes together here. The architecture and the light, and I have an interest in uh, plants and foliage, and I just really like it. So I think if you really like something, it, you naturally you gravitate towards that, and that's what you want to paint. So I'll take a photograph, I'll crop it to the size that fits the canvas that, I'm gonna, that I think is gonna work. I put it on a big monitor in my studio, and I sketch it out, on the canvas, and then I just start painting. I just fill it, you know, just take off. I use this knife mostly for just about everything. I also have a, a long knife that I use for general big areas when I first start the painting. I have like carpal tunnel, I think, in my hand, because most of the time I just mix paint, mix, 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 mix the color, and then I apply it, and then it's like mix, 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 mix more. So I spend a lot of time mixing paint, and I go through a lot of paint. It's, 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 it's kind of a wasteful process, but worth it. <laughs> for the most part, I think the fact that I use just this knife for the whole thing, it's distinctive so people can tell my style. I want to sort of force people to see this way, you know, I, I, want to, I have my vision, I want you to see it. This one I just brought in I really like with the little house because I like the way most of it's in shadow. It's just this one highlight of light that, that shines through the whole thing and, you know, it makes it exciting. Even on a bad day, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to paint today. And, but I'll get in the studio, and once you start 
Once you just start, it's just, you don't think about anything else. You just think about what you're doing, and, and then sometimes I don't even think about what I'm doing. It just sort of happens. I'm, I think the best paintings I do, I'm just painting, and it's just flying off. It's just flying out of my hand, and it's like, I didn't even do it. You know, it's, it's just, and then I look back, and it's like, whoa, that's pretty good. <laughs> And other times, it's like, I'm trying so hard, and it's like, oh, that's really bad. But, but it's mostly when, when I'm just on a roll and, and going with the flow and not thinking too hard, and that's when I do my best work. You know, I try to capture something that's gonna make people smile and like that spot, and, and makes a lot of people happy, I think. I want them to feel good when they look at it. You know, I, I feel good when I paint it, so I think that, and I think that comes through. If, you, if, you ha if you're having a good time and you're painting, and I think that comes out on the painting. here at the Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory to check out the Butterfly Gallery. Come along as we explore this wildlife sanctuary. It's a pleasure to be here right now with George Fernandez. He is the co-owner of the amazing Butterfly and Nature Conservatory and we're here inside the Butterfly Gallery. George, tell me about something. Tell me about something. This is amazing. Thank you. I really start uh, by giving credit to Sam Trophia, who is the co-owner of the Key West Butterfly Nature Conservatory. Okay. He began with the work with the gallery when he was 15 years of age. His work, which is what you see here in the gallery, is really a, a representation of Mother Nature's work of art, as we'd like to say. Butterfly by nature lives approximately two weeks. Once the butterfly dies, we're able to collect, we're able to preserve. It is sealed in an airtight environment. So for a lifetime, we have preserved Mother Nature. Do people paint, do you paint these, or just the beautiful look of the butterfly? This is nature. The coloration wow. patterns are made by scales. There's over 17,500 species. We work from farms from Central South America, Africa, Southeast Asia, and we selectively choose the most beautiful butterflies throughout the world. Wow. Um, the artwork is done with creative ability to be able to work with any, it's like a palette, literally, but this is Mother Nature, truly. These are scales that make the coloration pattern on wow. a butterfly. It takes time, it's a gift, it's a talent, and being able to know, these wings are extremely delicate. The wings right. themselves are like our, our fingernails, it's called the mucopolysaccharide or a chitin, but there are 160 rows per inch of scales in a typical morpho butterfly, that is our logo, the metallic blue. They range from Central America all the way to South America. That is the, the morpho. Yeah, this is just amazing. So I see, so this is all nature's work, but then you guys do your actual touch to it and kind of give the butterflies like, it's interesting because they, they live so short, but then you make them live, like life forever. Time preservation, this sealed yeah. inside the acrylic, this is really important part about the artwork. Three elements, we protect it and sealed airtight because moisture, dust, and microorganisms could impact them. But once they are sealed, they're forever protected. All we ask of, of our uh, customers, never expose them to direct sun because these are pigments that all right. make coloration patterns all right. on all these butterflies. Okay, then think about that, it's natural. Scales, yeah. yeah, yes sir, it's special. Yeah, they are beautiful. So tell me a little bit about the conservatory. What are you guys doing over there? It is a audio, visual, sensory experience as we like to describe it. As you enter, you learn uh, first uh, from a uh, 15 minute video film presentation. We walked to the Butterfly Conservatory, which is a tropical world. Okay. Ideal temperature is about 80 degrees, 85% humidity. There's over a thousand butterflies that represent farms from, again, Central, South America, Africa, Southeast Asia. We import the chrysalis. The chrysalis hatches in a butterfly by nature. Most people are surprised to say it's about two weeks. Um, they live as long as three weeks. That is the adult life cycle. I give my business partner, uh, Sam Trophy, the credit. He calls the Key West Butterfly and Nature, nature Conservatory right. because it's all about nature. It's instilling the idea to people as we give out little packets of milkweeds. We can do our part. We can do our share right. to help butterflies. But it really goes back to Sam, his passion, his love, as with anything you do in life. And that's what he wanted to work with, butterflies. And 
and, and everybody's just following and you're introducing something that you know we don't see every day but we know butterflies but now you get to see it on this scale and thank you it's unique exactly. 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 It's, 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 unique. Unique. it's a unique experience thank you thanks brother and i want to say i'm honored and it's a privilege to have you here hey man you. always welcome thank you thank for you sure. sir thanks for watching us on art loft Find us on social media at Artloft SFL where you can connect with us anytime. For Artloft, I'm Jumani and Namdi. Now remember, art imitates life, so do what? Live a beautiful life. Peace. All right, time to enjoy the keys. Gotta go. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture.